Hi guys, so in this week's video I want to dive into the jungle of outdoor slash landscape photography gloves because there is quite a lot on the market and over the years I have used many different kinds so in this week's video I want to go over five of the main photography gloves that I have used and last year a couple of companies sent me their gloves for me to try out during the winter. I've also used them a little bit uh, so far. Right now we're in December. I'm not sponsored by these companies. Uh, they did provide me with an affiliate link, which you're probably not going to use after you've seen this review. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I want to just go over it. This is by no means, uh, this is the best photography glove in the world video, but it should give you some ideas about what to look for when you're out looking for some new photography gloves yourself and I want to start out with uh, these rather thin ones from 66 degrees north Icelandic brand and I've used these for some years and they mainly work as you know a light cover uh, gloves they have provided some touch screen ish sensitive stuff here on the fingertips but in all honesty it doesn't work so yeah I kind of like them, they're fluffy, they're nice. The only problem is that the sewings are of absolutely horrendous quality. I have owned two of these and having only used them for very little, the second pair here, they are already, as you can see here, like getting broke here and here. And it's the same for both this pair and my old pair so i have to go in and like sew them myself on the inside so yeah well that's not really the point of getting new gloves right so they work for the most part when you do sew them yourself <laughs> um, especially during spring and autumn but for really cold temperatures out in the snow like in iceland or norway and so forth um, I can't really recommend these for winter photography. Also, you can't really take your fingers. You need to take the entire glove off to use the camera unless you use them, use the camera with the gloves on. However, so yeah, these were these. 66 degrees north also have some, I'm not even sure what they're called in English, but some gloves that only protects like the hands and then you have the fingers free. These, however, seem to be of decent build quality, sewing quality, like they haven't like died on me yet and I have owned these for like three years and they work really, really well. Obviously, since the fingers are free, you wouldn't want to use these in very, very cold weather either. So spring and autumn, they're probably best too. Or you can put some other kind of glove above, but it kind of like nullifies the idea about having a photography glove where you can have your fingers free. But these from 66 degrees north, I can actually recommend these just not for winter photography, but generally I, I really enjoy using these. They, they work really well to protect your hands. And that's these also protect your hands, but again, like if, if, if they die after like a few times you've used it, they're not really like worth it. Now, what else do we have? We have, of course, many of you probably have heard about Valorant. It's a Norwegian brand. And for the most part, Valorant gloves, when you put them on, they feel very, very comfortable. They are of good build quality. You can open the thumb right here, and there's this little magnetic thing that holds the finger back here and you can do so with i'm not even sure what this finger is called in english but we would call it the pointy finger in danish <laughs> um, and they you know work they protect your hands the one thing that all the gloves have in common is that they do warm your hands when you're out hiking when you're out walking but where many gloves fail i have found is that when you're standing still during cold weather for a longer period, which we usually do as landscape photographers, then ma many of these gloves actually fail to keep your hands warm. And that's the same thing with the Valorant gloves. They are comfortable. It's like putting your hand into a cloud. 
they just don't work. <laughs> That's the problem. They are supposed to warm your fingers and they don't. They protect your hands, they protect your fingers from the worst frostbite in very, very cold weather. But as the, the, the second you take your fingers out here and they are cooling down in cold weather, then they are cold. And when it's cold weather and you put the fingers back on, they don't get warm. And that is why I'm, I want <laughs> to be able to recommend these gloves because they are great build quality. They just don't keep your hands warm if you're standing still as we do as landscape photographers. Now obviously it does come with a little pocket up here and you can put some kind of warming inside uh, the pocket which ought to work because that is like where your veins go out and your blood comes in so that should keep your blood warm. But the gloves in and of themselves only sadly do not keep your hands as warm as you would want to. Also, I do find that these magnets don't work exactly as intended. They work sometimes. And when you finally have your fingers out, it's still not really, you know, good to use your camera like this. So in all honesty, consider the price. They are fairly steep. It is, it is good quality. If I had to buy these gloves myself, I wouldn't do it. So we have some uh, wannabe Valorant <laughs> gloves from PTY Tech. They are cheaper. They are not as great in the quality. They are also thinner. And they also sent me these gloves last year for me to try them out. When they come, they are quite stiff. So you have to use them sometimes for, for them to like, you know, soften up. But afterwards, due to them actually being a little bit thinner, you don't feel that you're running around with like fat doll fingers all the time. So in many ways, I actually find that these gloves work better at working with the camera than the Valorant gloves do. And you can take your fingers, you can have two fingers out on this one and your thumb. And instead of it being magnets, it is like, regular small buttons that you can like click on here and here and here so they are definitely not coming back out without you uh, unpopping them so in that way i would actually say that these pty tech gloves although thinner and that's the main problem about them just as with the valorant gloves they work pretty decent when you have to work with your camera. But just as with the Valorant gloves, if you're standing for a long time and it's cold, then they don't work. They don't keep your hands warm. And uh, after all, isn't that what winter gloves are supposed to do? If you're moving around, yes, if you're hiking, something like that, they will keep your hands warm. And uh, yeah, because your blood is like circulating in you and it's going around your body. So, yeah, for walking, good. For standing still, uh, for half an hour or, or more. They protect your hands, but they don't warm your hands. So you will get cold fingers. Now, the last pair I have used, and also the pair that I again and again and again reach for when I have to take out gloves from my photography bag, are this, these very cheap, relatively cheap, finger glove slash mittens from Icewear, which is an Icelandic brand. And in all honesty, the, the, the build quality is terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. You can see here, this is also my second pair. It's coming off here relatively easily, right here. And there is some Velcro up here on the top that is supposed to be able to go on this velcro down here so it should like stay open but it kind of works but not not really so yeah that's terrible you can also see that the sewing here it was supposed to like sit here but that is also like coming off so at some point i guess this one falls off but they are relatively cheap not that i'm a big fan of super duper consumerism 
but consider the price and what you get I would say these gloves are the best and the secret why these gloves are the best why they work so well compared to all the other gloves is that they are wool I cannot fathom why clothing companies are not using more wool if you want to keep warm in Iceland, the Faroes, in Norway, any cold country, use wool, not Gore-Tex, not polyester, not cotton, use wool. There's many different types of wool, sheep wool, obviously, merino, mer merino wool is the one I prefer because it's not itchy. So I usually have like a base layer, a long sleeve base layer of merino wool inside everything and I'm usually not cold. And it's the same with the gloves. Make sure that it's wool gloves that you use. On the very inside, you have like a very soft layer. You can see right here. So it is rather soft here. I guess this is like polyester, like plastic, but on the outside, it is wool. And that's what will keep you warm. On top of that, it is very, very easy to just flip the mitten part here up and then you have your fingers free the only thing that i find that these gloves need is just the same thing for the thumb the only problem is with the thumb that i can imagine if they also put this velcro here it would also just like you know be in the way constantly and be annoying um, but if they improved on that build quality and they doubled the price and made them you know a little bit more efficient to to use i guess <laughs> uh, i wouldn't have any problem uh, buying it for, for for double the price if if they weren't so flimsy but uh, yeah when it comes to photography gloves there's no doubt that these woolen gloves are the ones i prefer so if any glove company out there is looking along here I would highly <laughs> recommend to use some wool in your gloves because you can actually, even when you're cold out in the field, you're standing still and you put on these gloves, at least that's my experience, then my fingers start to warm. Contrary to the other gloves, my fingers get warm and obviously they get very warm when I'm out hiking. So wool as uh, the outer layer or use it somewhere so your fingers get warm. Make sure that you can take off this top here and that it actually sticks properly to the back here in a good build quality. So you have your fingers free. The same for the thumb, which of course is hard to design, but make sure that the thumb also comes out and you can easily pull it back on. I have actually found gloves uh, which could do that, that actually fitted my hands really well. The only problem is that they weren't wool, so yeah, it was just polyester, which is a really, really bad material when you are standing out in the cold because it's not really insulating anything, but wool is. So if you're out looking for landscape photography gloves, outdoor gloves, these were my thoughts. I hope you can use them and no vlog here without also doing some photography. I was out, i have just come home from photographing a beautiful moon set this morning so uh, yeah check that out oh also uh, remember i have some uh, landscape photography composition ebooks available so if you want to learn about composition in landscape photography be sure to check out those ebooks i've designed them so they're very easy to read they are very easy to understand i have loads of photo examples in them so you should be able to get straight to the point one of my personal issues when it comes to ebooks and photography books is that there's just way too much text you don't need all that text to get to the point photography is a visual medium so you should be able to show it for the most part <laughs> so yeah check them out uh, down in the description there is a free light version of it so a smaller version where i cut out most of the stuff from them so you can kind of see like the concept of them uh, so yeah check them out in the description below and here comes some photography
so the thing about photographing the moon is that <laughs> each time I film something b-roll I will have to move because the moon has moved but this photo here is so so beautiful so as you can see I've, I've only just put up this camera and now I have to like move again it's so nice especially because right now uh, so I have the moon above the two trees and then I have the shadows from my background trees so I have some kind of uneven light on the foreground while the two main trees are lit looks really really nice I'm just going to film this for some b-roll then you can see it here and it just looks looks really really nice so I had a guy before walking in oh, oh, oh. geese 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 I saw up ah too late wasn't fast enough there were some geese flying in over the scene anyway <laughs> so I had a guy coming in walking underneath the two trees it was before the light was perfect the moon was a little bit further up so I think that shot is really really nice but yeah I actually I actually think I got the main shot by now because the light is turning less orange now and the moon is coming down really really fast here so yeah, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. I hope you appreciated this video and Merry Christmas to you all. It's Christmas in like four days from when I'm recording this video, two days from when you see it. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas and I will say Happy New Year in next week's video, I think. So yeah, thanks for watching. As always, I would highly appreciate a like and a comment and all that stuff.